Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Chocolate Beauty. We're gonna be talking about married at first sight. Let's get into it. So this week's episode was concentrating on the couples meeting up with the therapist to talk about issues in their relationship. I feel so bad for Paige because even after she decided to not even fight for the relationship no more, her husband continues to disrespect her. I just, I don't even know why he continues to berate her and attack her. We understand it's over, you've moved on, you went back to your ex, but the fact that he keeps coming at her about how the way she looks, it's just like, sir, did you not look in the mirror like Chris? Like you're an okay looking guy. You're acting like you're the most handsome man of the group. You're not. Paige was just talking about her hurt and she didn't really understand why he went out his way to do certain things, how, you know, how she was treated because she came into this trying to find a life partner, trying to make sure that her relationship worked, tried to fight for the person that she was with, but the person that they connected her with was a piece of trash. I don't even know why you are such a narcissist. Now, I, I don't understand why you think you're just so above dating somebody or being in a relationship with somebody that looks like Paige. First of all, when you showed up to your therapy meeting, you were late. You were like an hour late. It was very disrespectful, and but nobody is surprised by the level of disrespect you are given during this episode. It's, it's something that you have done throughout the whole duration of this marriage and of the show. So nobody should be surprised by your behavior. The therapist, he talked to you about why it didn't work with in between you and Paige, and he just is trying to get a better understanding of what's going on. You said that she does not look the part and her face was the problem. I think that's the reason why your relationship don't work, Chris, because you're looking for the exterior. Probably not somebody who is an intellect or has something to bring to the table. It's said that you discriminated against her because of the way that she looks. And the, and the entire time during the conversation, you was like, it was her face. I don't like how the way her face looked. It's her face. She's just not attractive. And then you, when you turned around and blamed the people who put y'all together, saying that they should have no better and giving you somebody that was more attractive. Chris, you can miss me with that because you would have still had an issue because you did this show out of revenge. And the reason why I know this for a fact is because of the way that you're treating Paige. And she didn't do nothing to you. She did nothing to provoke you. So I can't, I can't even imagine what it's like to be in a relationship with you. I can't imagine what it's like to actually provoke you. And, and instead of manning up and just being honest about who you are and why you did what you did, you're going to sit up here and blame the people who brought y'all together. You're going to blame her for looking the way that she looks. It doesn't matter how Paige looks. You would have treated any woman that they have given you the same way. Your intentions was to be so extreme and dramatic with your fiance by publicly embarrassing her, by leaving her and then marrying the stranger. You wanted to make sure that your disrespect was felt and seen at the same time. So don't try to play this game talking about you would have tried harder if it was somebody that you were attracted to. I don't think so. It would have been the same regardless of how she looks. You have no respect for women. And it's quite clear that you don't. The whole thought process of you buying your ex fiance a Mercedes and your wife having a problem with it, your response is, well, she could have came with me when we bought the car. <laughs> you had no respect for her. And I feel like you don't have respect for women at all. I don't know if it started at home or not, but it won't be surprising if you don't respect your mother either. Now, Clara and Ryan, you guys are in both in denial about where your relationship stands. The fact that you think that your relationship is good, you guys have a lot of differences and differences that can really separate families. I mean, I don't even understand why they will match you together with you having so many different ideas on, on serious topics. I don't understand why you guys will match together after watching this episode. Number one, you don't agree on religion. His parents are pastors. He wants to raise his children in church. 
Clara wants to raise her children to be open to all religions. That's a very important thing. A lot of people have gotten divorced because of this type of difference. That one thing alone, they shouldn't have been put together. Because they're unevenly yoked. There needs to be some type of evenness that goes on when you're matchmaking them. I believe that's why Ryan is not sleeping with her. She has to either convert to his religious beliefs or he's going to leave her. He's treating her like a girlfriend. So if he is a person that studied abstinence before he got married with all his girlfriends, that's how the way he's going to treat her until she converts to his religion. Because of how the way that he was raised and because of how the way that he still feels, I don't think that you guys are going to go anywhere in your relationship. You got too many differences. Y'all not in the same place. Yes, y'all like each other. Yes, you do care. Ryan may have a deeper understanding on what Claire needs because of his faith. And, and the Bible says that you're supposed to love your wife um, as you love the church. And uh, I believe that he's given her the love based on what the Bible says. And now I'm like really understanding why he is not treating her like a wife. He's treating her like a girl girlfriend. He's in the process of courtship because they had too many differences when it comes to their religious faith and he's going to keep her there. She doesn't change her outlook to the way his outlook is. They're not going to work. Virginia and Eric is another couple that is in denial about where their relationship is. They think they're in a good place, but they can't agree on a lot of things. See, this is the thing about people who are controlling when they're having a conversation about something so simple, trying to get people to understand why they feel how the way they feel. When Eric was talking about his relationship with, with Virginia's dog and how he needs to make sure that the dog is trained and that she allows him to be a part of the dog's life and how immediately that therapist was able to call out and say, um, no, that's a form of control. What you're doing is, is no different from people who go into marriages demanding that their stepchildren comply by the way that you do things. That takes time. I'm glad that the therapist called him out on his controlling behavior because he really didn't understand how controlling he was. It's kind of like you're trying to come in her space and, and take things and make it into your way. And that's not compromise. You need to get to a place where it's kind of like you meet her halfway. And I'm glad that the therapist called out them drinking and that drinking leads to the majority of their outbursts and arguments. I think that Eric was more open to the conversation, but when he brought it to uh, Virginia, she was like, I don't want to talk about it. She was actually being very childish. Her sister came on this episode and shed a lot of light on a lot of things. Virginia doesn't have that much experience when it comes to a relationship. It really gave me a better understanding on why she comes across very immature and why she reacts the way that she reacts. It just, it just is mind boggling that somebody who is so immature in a relationship decides to go and get married. Marriage is a very serious thing. It's not boyfriend and girlfriend. And since you don't have that much experience in relationship, you don't know how to really fight through things. You don't know how to get through things. You throw tantrums like a toddler when the conversation gets heavy, when the conversation gets serious. Eric wanting to have children with her now. If she doesn't want to have kids, he's out. First of all, I wouldn't even want to attempt to have a baby with her until the next four or five years to get her seasoned and to get her more experience of what it's, what it's like to be in a relationship. That's just my opinion. Brianna is financially irresponsible. When they created their budget and it was over $9,100 for their monthly budget and Brianna's logic was I've worked hard and I've, you know, and I've gotten to a certain place where I can spend. Well, whatever debt you incur, your husband incurs it. You're saying that he's being frugal. I don't think that he's being frugal when he said he doesn't want to spend over 9,000. Now, if you have it, then you have it, but he doesn't have it. And the way that things are going in this country and the way that jobs have dried up for a lot of people, it's just unwise to spend that kind of money every month. You can live life good and be responsible. 
I don't think that Vincent was being unreasonable. And also you see that um, they're having issues with children. Brianna has high blood pressure. And which is very dangerous. She can actually stroke out if she has a child. So she has to be extremely careful. And she doesn't want to get preeclampsia, which will make her blood pressure even worse. And can be fatal for her and the baby. So I can understand why she doesn't want to have a child because of her health issues. So... I don't think that Vincent is really taking into, into consideration. He needs to get more knowledge about that and be a little bit more sensitive towards that situation. And they need to probably find out different options. Maybe do surrogacy. Oh, that has to be something on the table because of how dangerous it is to already have high blood pressure before pregnancy. Her fear is very genuine. Haley and Jacob's conversation with the therapist was very interesting because you see that Jacob has a very hard time with his communication skills. He is not the best communicator. He doesn't like talking. All he really has to do to really save his relationship with Haley is to have a conversation with her, to be open with her. They both want to make their relationship work. Haley is turned off by how the way that he acts and how the way that he doesn't communicate. And I mean, communication is very hard for some people, but I think that it's something that it can be fixable. Now I'm having more hope for you guys. Stop being so creepy with your creepy jokes or whatever kind of jokes that you have and try to talk about serious things on where you stand and what you need in a relationship. The fact of the matter is, how is Haley able to give you what you want if you're not able to tell her what you want? So you just need to be open to the conversation. There's the only way that they're going to save their marriage. If Jacob continue down this road of not talking and not communicating and really telling Haley how the way that he feels their relationship will be done they will decide to not continue with this relationship by the end of this show all right you guys thank you for watching my latest recap on married at first sight hopefully I'll see you soon ciao